Number 17. The initial concentrations or pressures of reactants and products are given for each of the following systems. And then it says calculate the reaction quotient and determine the direction in which each system will proceed to reach equilibrium. And then we have letter B. So we need to find out what's going on with this reaction. So the first thing is I'm going to just rewrite it nice and big. So we have two ammonia, right? Two NH3s, and that's a gas. This comes to equilibrium because I see it as a double arrow with N2, and that's a gas, plus three H2s, and that's also a gas. They already put coefficients here, so I'm going to assume that it's balanced. The next thing I do is I just put the numbers that they give me with, you know, who it is. So for example, NH3, they told us that we had three ATM. So here's my NH3. I'm just going to say that I have 3.0 ATM here. If you want to put the ATM, that's fine. ATM. N2 was 2 ATM. So here's N2. So 2.0 ATM. And then H2 was 1 ATM. Okay, that's how much I have for each of them. Cool. Now we're ready to calculate the reaction quotient. Remember, the reaction quotient is the Q value. Now, QC versus QP, it just has to match with what the K value they give you. So the K value that they gave you was KP. P stands for pressure, and all of these units of ATM, those are pressure units. So we're going to be working with the QP. And I wrote the formula down here. It's essentially the same as the QC, but it's just different notation. Instead of brackets, which we see in the QC formula, we just use these P's, but it's basically the same thing, products divided by the reactants. And the same thing goes, only aqueous and gases are allowed in this formula. So I just gotta check that, but I see gas, gas, and gas, so they're all good. So let's work from left to right, we'll start over here. So QP equals something over something else, Products over reactants, let's just write the formula, right? So I got the pressure of N2. And since there was only one here, right? There was, there was no number here, right? So that means that there was one. I can technically raise this to the first, but anything raised to the first is the same. So I'm just going to move on. And remember, these are being multiplied together, not added. So then it would be the pressure of the next product, H2, but this one has a coefficient. There's a three here, right? There's a three. So I have to raise this one. I put it in, bra uh, not brackets, parentheses, and raise it to the third. Then I do the reactant. So I got pressure, P, say who it is, NH3, and there's two of them. So I have to put that in brackets and I have to raise it to the second. And now we're ready to rock and roll. KP equals, let's actually put those numbers in, right? So I got the pressure of N2, which was 2.0, times by the pressure that they said of H2, which was 1.0, right? But that one I have to raise to the third. But one raised to the third is just one, right? But just to show you guys. And then comes the NH3 on the bottom, I got 3.0, and that one is raised to the second. All right, so let's get one number for the top, one number for the bottom, and then we'll do the nice division. So seems like the top number is just going to be 2.0. Whoop, 0, 0.0. That was magic. <laughs> and then the bottom one, 3 squared is basically 9, right? So whether you put a 9, I don't care, or 9.0, whatever, doesn't really matter to me. And then QP equals, let's get that answer, 2 divided by 9. Whoa, 0 0.22, repeating. I'm just going to cut it off after two sig figs because I see that all of these have just two sig figs. Okay, so we found the reaction quotient. First part done. Now, in order to find the direction in which system will proceed, we just have to compare what the Q value was to the K value. And now what I do is I 
always put the Q value on the right side of the comparison and the K value on the left. A lot of uh, textbooks will actually swap these, but there's an actually cool trick if you put the Q on the right hand side. So I'll show you the, uh, the trick. So I have um, 0 0.22 for the Q value, and I'll just say maybe these, you know, these are specifically QPs and KPs. So I have 0.22 for the Q value, and I have 6.8 times 10 to the fourth. Now remember what a large K value means, guys, right? A large K value means that at equilibrium, you should have a lot of products. Where are we? We don't have that great value, right? So do we have as many products as we need? No. So where do you think this is going to go? We need to go to what the KP says. The KP says, I need a lot of products. So it seems in theory that it's going to go this way because we need to produce this. Now we can also do the trick, right? If I just link this up and I say that KP is greater than QP because this number is greater than this number, and I wrote down what each one of them means. We're right here. If the K is greater than the Q, you have more reactants than needed right now. You have way more reactants than what you should have. So you're going to go this way. Basically what we just said. But here's the trick. You see this? Treat this as an arrowhead. Pull this back. Oh, look. I made, a, I made an arrow. And the arrow will tell you where you're shifting. That's pretty cool, right? So you're basically going this way. Just like we said. So we're going to shift or proceed, or whatever word you want to go, you know, go to the left. Actually, this is to the right. <laughs> Sometimes I get my lefts and my rights confused, but that's okay. Got to work on that. So in this case, we will shift to the right, and we are done. Hopefully this helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Let's keep studying hard. Let's keep doing awesome on our tests and quizzes. I'm rooting for you guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.